This is part two of my course on understanding analog tape machines and alignment. In this section, I'm going to go over test tapes and how to use them. This is very valuable for those of you actually aligning tape machines. For those of you more interested in gear eye candy, you may want to skip on to chapter three, where I actually operate and show you how a Studer 24 track machine works. Test tapes are pre-recorded audio tapes that have a series of very accurate tones recorded at a known magnetic level. This is known as the reference level. Most test tapes are full track or mono. Standard multi-track recordings record audio on equally spaced sections of the tape called tracks. These tracks are separated by unrecorded zones called guard bands. The guard bands serve to reduce audio bleed between adjacent channels. Full track test tapes are recorded using a large single channel record head that records audio over the entire surface of the tape. There are two advantages to full track test tapes. The large single head recording provides a very accurate reference for mechanical adjustments. With a full track test tape, you only need one calibration tape for each tape size. This example shows that a 2 inch test tape can be used to calibrate both 2 inch 16 track and 2 inch 24 track machines. The only disadvantage of a full track test tape is they're not accurate at low frequencies. This is caused by something called fringing effect. Multi track tape heads actually pick up low frequencies from some of the adjacent area between the tracks. This is not normally a problem because multi-track machines do not record audio in this area. But because the full track test tape is recorded across the entire surface of the tape, some of this information is picked up by the playback head during alignment, causing an inaccurate response at low frequencies. Low frequency errors caused by playing back a full track test tape on a multi-track machine is called fringing effect. Test tapes are available for all speeds and formats. Standard professional speeds are 15 and 30 inches per second. I generally use 30 inches per second to record because the tape moving faster has lower noise and more headroom. But many people prefer 15 inches per second because it tends to have a smoother low frequency response. MRL does sell test tapes that have both 15 and 30 inch per second alignment tones in a single reel. Analog tape machines have internal equalizers to compensate for frequency response irregularities that are inherent in the recording process. In the United States, the standard equalization curve at 7.5 and 15 inches per second is called NAB. In Europe, the standard EQ curve at 15 IPS is called CCIR. At 30 inches per second, there is a single worldwide standard called AES. Later machines might refer to NAB as IEC2 and CCIR as IEC1. Most professional machines manufactured after 1980 are able to switch between NAB and CCIR, but certain prosumer machines like 1 inch 16 track and half inch 8 track require CCIR equalization. You should verify your machine's equalization before purchasing a test tape. Test tapes are recorded at calibrated magnetic levels. This is called reference fluxivity. The unit of measure of magnetic strength is nanoweber's per meter. The original standard for test tapes was 185 nanoweber's per meter at 700 cycles. Aligning at this level was relatively simple. You set your playback level to read 0 VU from your test tape. You then remove your test tape. Load your machine with blank tape. 
while sending a 1 kHz signal from your console, set your record level to read 0 VU. But things got a little bit more complicated. Since tape is inherently noisy, tape manufacturers worked hard to create quieter tapes. The easiest way to do this was to develop a metal oxide that could record and hold a stronger signal. The next generation of audio tape, Ampex 406 for example, could record 3 dB hotter, which is equal to approximately 250 nanoweavers per meter. If we wanted to use the same 185 nanoweber per meter test tape for this 250 nanoweber per meter alignment, we would turn our playback level down 3 dB, setting our playback level to read minus 3 on the VU meter. Then we would increase our record level by 3 dB to 0 VU. This way we're getting the same level going in and out of the machine, but we're recording 3 dB hotter. The second generation of analog tape was capable of recording 6 dB hotter. So using a 185 nanoweber per meter test tape, we would set our playback level at minus 6 and compensate by bringing our record level up 6 dB to zero VU. The last generation of analog recording tape is capable of recording 9 dB hotter than 185 nanowebers per meter. So we'd set our playback level at minus 9 and our record level we would bring up 9 dB to zero VU. For professional machines, the most common test tape is 250 nanoweavers per meter. With this tape, it's easy to do a plus 3, plus 6, and plus 9 alignment. This tape is already recorded 3 dB hotter than 185 nanoweavers per meter. So using this tape, if you want a record alignment to be plus 3 above 185 nanoweavers per meter, you would set your playback level to 0 because this tape is already recorded 3 dB hotter. If you want your record alignment to be plus 6, you would set your playback level to minus 3. And if you want your record alignment to be plus 9, you would set your playback level to minus 6. If you're having a hard time wrapping your head around this, don't worry. I'll go over it again when I align the machine. If you have a professional machine, I would strongly suggest a 250 nanoweber dual speed test tape. With this, you could pretty much do all alignments at 15 and 30 inches per second. You just need to choose the correct tape size for your machine and choose the proper equalization. If you have a semi-professional machine, like a 16-track 1-inch, you need to check the specifications of your machine to determine the proper test tape. This chart shows you how to set your playback level depending on what test tape you have and what alignment you want. This is the end of part two. In the next section, part three, I explain how a tape machine works and I'm going to be using a Studer 24-track to demonstrate. If you like this video, if you would like to see more pro audio content like this, please hit like and subscribe. I know you guys are tired of hearing this, but it does make a difference.